so many people around the world that literally have such a passion for dance music and want to hear their favourite DJ's latest tunes that he's pushing out or just latest tunes that they're following and through, through streaming people have that access and kind of portal into, into what's going on. If you can't make it down to a club, it's a great way of seeing a set from your favourite DJ, so yeah, I think it's only a good thing. Like having the live streaming, having the, the internet radios, everything has created platforms for people to gain exposure. It benefits us in a way that it makes everything more accessible. You can be from Japan and you can be watching what's going on at that exact moment in London or vice versa anywhere else. It's just a great way to get access to music, a live performance in a way, and have it in your living room. Mix Maggot Lab is the world's favourite office party. So every week we invite people to come down, we have the world's best DJs come and play on the decks in the club in the corner of our office. And it gets pretty wild. Good afternoon and welcome to the lab. Every week we stream the world's best DJs from the club in the corner of our office. It is genuinely in our office. So we're working right up until like 4 p.m. 4 p.m. comes, loads of guests arrive. Uh, we shut down our computers, turn off the lights, fire up our huge void sound system. <laughs> lots of fun and people are really just like is this for real because you've got some people tapping away doing their work and you've got other people like dancing on tables. Luckily the call centre downstairs are kind of cool with it because we've been in the building for so long and just have what kind of is probably the best office party in the world. They're watching everywhere from Argentina uh, to America to Uruguay to Australia. Obviously as a print magazine um, it costs us a lot of money to send Mixmag all the way over to these territories but with the YouTube streaming platform and the excitement of, of that being a live show, it just means that we can connect to our, our fans worldwide and also to the DJ fans worldwide, which, is, which has been really cool. The first ever stream we did in the lab was actually with uh, Orbital, so obviously that was a massive one given that they're, I mean, legendary electronic music act. Kind of funny looking back at, at that stream, it was just one camera angle. We didn't know if it was going to work or not. We were all excited. None of us were particularly you know, none of us have been trained in, in broadcast or anything. Obviously, Orbital are well known for their iconic glasses with, that they wore, so we went to the DIY sh shop and everyone, all the guests, had these glasses on, but we didn't let them know until halfway through their set. The dance floor, aka just the office, kind of emptied, and on the stream you can sort of see them thinking where everyone's gone. And then we came back all wearing the Orbital glasses and they com completely buzzed off it. <laughs> We streamed from a BPM festival. Don't turn your back on me. Apollonia from like a beach party. We streamed for three hours, but it was it was such a wicked party. And I was just kind of like on the side of a, on the side of the DJ, with kind of slightly out of the way of the cameras, just kind of like bopping away, making sure the stream was all good, kind of just vibing out with everyone else. So I think as an individual stream, that's that's probably my favourite one that we did. I did one at the Mix Mag office where uh, I did it with DJ Pierre, who's a big hero of mine, and I took um, I took this one of my most prized 12 inches down for him to sign, and he just looked completely bemused. I had a bit of a fanboy moment with him, and it was it was at like four o'clock on a Friday afternoon, and everybody in the office just sort of down tools and got loads of Jägermeister out. But it just turned pretty quickly into a rave. I think it's necessary to remember. You know, the BBC were live streaming Glastonbury for decades. They just called it a live broadcast and did it far better than any of us are doing any of these streams. You know, they're still the masters of what they do. Um, what happened was um, technology became cheaper to allow you to do that. YouTube started a, and LiveBeat started a live streaming platform that meant all you needed was a couple of webcams and you could do this. You're always at the mercy of the internet and people take it for granted. You think wherever you go, even in this country, that it's going to be fine. It's definitely not, and it, it's not just a case of any old internet connection. It has to be strong enough for the streams. And obviously then we travel and go around the world and do it, so then you turn up a random location. You have to think on your feet, you have to learn, you have to be resourceful, you have to make it happen, and we always do. The biggest amount of people we ever had at one time online watching was uh, when we streamed Knife Party. <laughs> we had about 40,000 people all watching at the same time. But on average, you're getting about 10,000 people watching, which, considering people have lives and we do it at 4.30, 
on Friday afternoon and they're at work is really good. But then the video's available to watch immediately afterwards. So I'd say on average, you know, the, the biggest video views we have are over a million. The lowest we get are something like 50,000, which I don't know if 50,000 people watch my DJ set, I'd be really happy. I do think it does make the DJs a little bit more nervous, but I think it's an excited nervousness. Well, you're more conscious of what you're doing, yeah, that's for sure. So maybe definitely. have a few drinks to kind of loosen up. Yeah. Or not. <laughs> <laughs> do you think you, you shape up a little bit? You you know focus a little bit more on how, how you're playing? Once any good DJ kind of finds their rhythm and gets into their groove, they, they literally zone out on anything else that's going on and they're completely focused on doing the best set they can possibly can, whether there's cameras there or not. These guys are used to playing five, 10,000 capacity events. Um, this kind of goes back to the house party days. You know, they're playing to 50 people who are going nuts on a Friday afternoon. Obviously, technology is always evolving. You know, the streams will keep getting better and probably, you know, the market's getting a bit saturated with it, but the best ones will stand high above because the quality you can tell. YouTube are implementing a load of different things that are going to make live streams more interactive, such as when a tune's playing, perhaps you could hook up with Shazam or something, so you click on the stream, it takes you to a site where you can download it straight away. Um, so I think the future of live streaming is going to be a little bit more interactivity between the person watching uh, and the actual stream itself. But Ultimately, at its core, it's about the music. So as long as the audio quality is good and the DJs are playing a good set, really, that's all that matters.